Let me start by uh, introducing uh, dry beans to our audience. Uh, dry beans uh, belong to the uh, species and genus Fasciolus fulgaris, and these are the dry seed product of, uh, of beans. Uh, Fasciolus fulgaris includes uh, not only dry beans, as you can see in the, in the slide here, the different uh, seed types and color types and so forth. It also includes horticultural types that we know as snap beans or garden beans, shown on the, the bottom right of the slide. I, we call them dry beans because obviously they're harvested when they're mature and dry, and, and sometimes we need to call them dry beans just because bean sometimes gets confused with soybeans. So before I get into my topic, I, uh, dry beans, as it says here, are uh, a pretty package of health benefits. And let me just mention a little about the health benefits of beans. A, all beans need to be cooked, obviously, before they can be consumed. And here I'm showing a nutritional profile of one cup of cooked beans. And you can see that uh, beans are high in protein. That protein uh, blends well with cereal proteins for a vegetarian diet. Uh, they're very high in fiber, both uh, soluble and insoluble fiber. And then we have uh, high levels of nutrients, including magnesium, potassium, and calcium. Those are listed there on the slide, along with micronutrients, iron and zinc. And there are programs underway to enhance some of the micronutrient content. They also are very high in folic acid, which is an essential a nutrient also, and they're a gluten-free product. As we uh, look at beans, Fasciolus fulgaris, or the common bean, a, the common bean is, was featured uh, by the U.S. Postal Service in 2006 uh, in, among their stamp collection of crops of America. And here you see beans uh, listed with their two sister crops, the corn and squash, which are some of the traditional uh, crops of America, part of the a uh, rather famous milpa uh, production system. Uh, beans are also featured in the uh, the one on the back of the one dollar Native American coin in 2009, and you can see there that their uh, bean or corn and squash are being plant are planted, and beans are being planted in that uh, also. So you can see they've been very much a part of the culture of the Americas. When we look at the genus Fasciolus, there's five domesticated species, and common bean is the most important, the most widely grown. And uh, one of the other species is the lima bean, Fasciolus linatus. And if you look at the stamp, uh, just under the value of the stamp, the 39 cents, you'll see a large seed type there, and that's the lima bean also depicted in that stamp. The uh, species ranges are as fine from northern Mexico to northern Argentina. It's uh, an annual legume in the subfamily Fabiaceae, and it's quite variable in growth habit, seed color, and ecological adaptation, as you'll see from later discussion of in, this, in my talk. It's an important food source, source of protein, as I've mentioned, and as a legume, it uh, fixes nitrogen. A, even though it's a short season crop, it still fixes nitrogen similar to other grain legumes. And as I mentioned, uh, it includes the horticultural types, the garden bean or green beans or snap beans, as also is depicted in that uh, illustration on the stamp. So where were common beans domesticated? Well, as we mentioned, uh, wild bean ranges from northern Mexico, Chihuahua, all the way down to northern Argen to Salta in northern Argentina. And you can see that illustrated in the map on the right hand side. A, the small uh, the seeds that you see in the center of, this, of the screen are wild beans. You can see they're very small compared to the domesticated types on the left hand side of the screen. And you may notice that the, uh, the larger beans are found generally in, uh, in South America or in the Andean region more so than in Middle America. Prior knowledge placed the original origins of beans 
in Ecuador and uh, northern Peru, but that has since been uh, changed uh, fairly recently. And as you can see in this next slide, common beans now have been shown to originate not as a Nandean crop, but as a Middle American crop. You can see them illustrated in this green area in the state of Jalisco and Guadalajara, Mexico. From there, they moved northwards up towards Chihuahua, moved down through the Isthmus of Panama, all the way down, as I said, to northern Argentina. And we have two areas of domestication of beans. The Middle American origin, as uh, shown in, the, in Mexico in the green area, and that area in the, the Andes, the southern Andes, and the violet area in southern Peru. And what's interesting is you see similar areas of domestication in Mexico for maize along with beans. Part of, and part of that, uh, uh, that cultivation, that milk cultivation, uh, cropping system cultivation. What also is interesting, I had mentioned lima beans. There is again, as you look at Mexico in the upper part of the slide, you can see both lima beans and common beans were domesticated in generally the same region of Mexico, but as you look at the Andean domestication regions, you can see that a beans or common beans are domesticated in southern Peru, whereas the lima bean appears to be domesticated more into Ecuador or northern Peru. So as a result of domestication, we have two quite distinct gene pools of beans. The Andean gene pool, which includes mostly our larger seeded types and then uh, on the right hand side of the slide we have we call the middle american or mesoamerican gene pool which includes our smaller or medium seeded types these have been further subdivided based on ecological adaptation and geographic uh, distribution and, and genetic uh, differences into three separate races in each of these gene pools we have uh, race Nueva Granada, which is illustrated by the North American white and red kidneys on the left-hand side of the screen. You can see the white kidneys and the two red kidneys. You have the yellow beans, which uh, come from Peru, or race Peru. And then the red mottled types, known as cranberry beans, which uh, come from Chile, or race Chile. And these are quite distinctively, genetically distinct from the middle American gene pool. And here we are illustrating it by the North American types. In race Durango, we have the pinto and the white seeded great northern. The Mesoamerican, which is the small seeded types, which are the black and navy beans. And then we have race Jalisco, which is the red and pink beans. These can all be intercrossed, but there is genetic incompatibilities between the gene pools, which prevents the free flow of, of, all, of certain traits between some of these, uh, between the two gene pools. If we look at where beans, how beans moved into North America, obviously the uh, you can see in Mexico here the arrow indicating where race Durango. The pintos moved right up into the center part of the U.S. and are well adapted to that region. The Mesoamerican types then moved into the Caribbean. That would be the blacks and navies. And then they moved up into the east coast and eventually up into the, Midway, into the Great Lakes area. And then the Andean beans then uh, moved out of uh, the regions of uh, Colombia and Peru into Brazil. And from Brazil, they were moved then over to Europe uh, during the 1600s. And from Europe, then they found their, they were moved then as part of the slave trade into Africa, and now are widely grown in more highland areas of, of East Africa. Those Andean beans that also went to Europe made their way back to the U.S. and are found then on the East Coast, and many of them are many of the old heirloom or land race varieties that you hear people talk about in on the East Coast. Here's a uh, photo of maybe of a future uh, World Cup soccer player here. This is a picture of some bean production test trials in northern Rwanda 
and you can see the climbing beans here, and these are these Andean types that are very important, a very important food source in East Africa, uh, East and uh, Southern Africa. And again, the seed types that you find in, in Rwanda are very similar, as you can see, in size and color to the North American red kidney beans or the, uh, the cranberry beans from Chile and so forth. And these are very, very important uh, food source throughout, as I said, Eastern and, and uh, Southern Africa. A, just a few uh, words on uh, dry beans in the U.S. The U.S., as it indicates here, is the sixth leading producer of dry beans. Brazil is the leading producer, followed by Mexico. And production in the U.S. is uh, largely in the northern states, uh, since beans are a shorter season crop. Or as we go west, they're found at higher elevations where long season crops are not well adapted. So you find them in the higher elevations, higher production zones of Colorado into the intermountain areas of uh, Idaho and, uh, and central Washington. A, in the Midwest, Michigan and the upper Midwest, North Dakota produce, together produce about half of the U.S. production and most of that production is under rain-fed conditions. A, the, all the western production a, has to be irrigated because it's in the, essentially in the rain shadow production area. Some 20% of the crop, the U.S. crop, is exported, and the, the value in 2011, which doesn't change much, is uh, listed here at $790 million. In Michigan, uh, you can see we're the second uh, leading producer of, of beans, or we're the leading producer of black beans, cranberry beans, and small reds, and uh, the second leading producer of navy and kidney beans. And I want to point out that for those who are not familiar with the crop, it is a non-GMO crop. So in the state of Michigan, a, for many years, for many decades, was a large uh, producer of white beans, the navy beans. But there was a time, a need for diversification in our industry because of opportunities of export markets, but also because of changes in national production. So our program over the last number of decades then has expanded dramatically from breeding just navy beans and, and kidney beans to breeding a series of different classes, many of which were not well adapted here and required a efforts to change both a growth habit, local adaptation, and different levels of disease resistance. And along with those changes, we had to maintain the quality aspects that beans are recognized by, by both the processing industry and by the consumer. So I list here the middle American uh, seed types that I showed earlier. On the left-hand side of the screen, the pintos, the navies, the northerns, the blacks, the reds, and the pinks. And then on the right-hand side, we have the Andean beans, the three kidney types, and some of the minor classes like soldier beans, cranberry beans, and yellow eye beans. And the greatest genetic diversity still lies in the middle American gene pool where beans originated. There's significantly less genetic variation in the Andean pool, even though you see quite a range of diversity in seed color. 